Hey, shalom, 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 shalom. Um, grace and peace, grace and peace, grace and peace, family. I'm just jumping on really quick, and I just want to reiterate truth according to the word. I'm just jumping on very quickly and very briefly, and I just want to reiterate truth according to his word. Uh, yeah, I just, I've, been, I've been speaking about this lately when I speak to my brothers and my sisters in regards uh, to the gospel. And, and what I've been speaking on, what I spoke upon lately and what I've been meditating on lately or what the Father had, had been putting in my heart lately is how precise that he is when it comes to his word. You know, the Father is very precise when it comes to his word. Um, his word should not fall on deaf ears, right? If you choose to allow his word to fall on deaf ears, you in trouble, you know? Grace and peace, grace and peace, grace and peace. Miss Brenda, grace and peace. Uh, Relena, kingdom focus. You know, the Father is very precise with it, with his word, and we have to get that revelation. Um, anytime that you read in the Old Testament, anytime you read from the book of Genesis um, to Revelation, you'll see how precise he is, right? Especially in the Old Testament, he, he did not play. If he told you to do something, you did not do it. Oh, you was in trouble, right? I remember when he told Moses to speak to the rock. <laughs> but Moses took it upon himself to strike the rock, right? And that, that had caused him to not to enter to the promised land because he didn't believe. And that same incident had caused his brother Mo, um, Aaron to be killed and, and have his clothes and his garments stripped off of him on the mountain. Because the father told them to set me apart, sanctify me. And I want you to speak to the rock. But Moses leaned upon his own understanding and he took it upon himself to not to speak to the rock and not to sanctify the father. But he said, we shall make water come out from this rock. And I'm not going to do what the father said. I'm going to be like my father, Adam. The father told Adam to not to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But I will rebel against my father order and lean upon my own understanding. And instead of me speaking to the rock, I'm going to hit the rock. And he was in very, very deep trouble. The father, very precise family. We have to get that revelation. When he tells you to believe it in the gospel, which is the death, burial, and the resurrection of Christ, that is a commandment. So if you spend the duration of your life walking to and from, and when you stand before him on judgment day, and when he asks you, why did you not believe it that the word became flesh? Why did you not believe it in my son? Why did, you not, why did you not believe that he died for your sins? You're not going to be able to stand before him with a whole bunch of excuses. Moses, speak to the rock. But you said, no, I'm going to strike the rock and we're going to make water come out. Ain't no we. The father's one. Ain't no we. The father set apart. It ain't no we. The father Kodesh it ain't no we. It's the father's doing. Now you obey the father. When he tell you to speak to the rock, you speak to the rock. And if he tell you to hit the rock, then and only then should you hit the rock in spirit and in truth. So I will be reading from the book of Numbers. Chapter 20, verses 1 through 13. The book of Numbers, chapter 20, verses 1 through 13. We have to speak to the rock. And when he tells us to speak to the rock, <laughs> we have to, family. This is what I got from it. You know, this is what the Holy Spirit taught me. And he been, and he been gave me this lesson. He been taught me this years ago. But he want me to reiterate it right now. When I tell you to speak to the rock, you speak to the rock. If I tell you to... Uh, Hit the rock, then you hit the rock. If I tell you to not to look back, then you should not look back. Don't, don't, don't. If I tell you not to look back and you look back, I'm going to take your life. The angel told Lot wife, do not look back. But she took it upon herself. She leaned upon her own understanding. She allowed doubt and, and, and fear 
to creep in and, the, and she decided to look back. And she became a pillow salt. The father tell you to speak to the rock, you speak to the rock. And the father tell you to hit the rock, you hit the rock. And the father tell you to be quiet, you be quiet. If the father tell you to move, you should move. It's about relationship. And it's way deeper than the pages that is within the Bible. He had baptized his spirit aside to help lead and guide you to all truth. The father might tell you it's not, it might not be appropriate for you to hang out with Ray Rain Pookie them. I know you're fit to go to your mother's house, but I need you to go over here and pray for this young lady. Can you please go and pray for the young lady? I know you're fit to go watch the football game with your father, but I need you to stand before the, before the church and proclaim the gospel of Christ. You do what the Holy Spirit tell you to do, and don't you hesitate. The book of Numbers, chapter 20, verse 1 through 13. I'm going to read it once. I'm going to close out the message, and I pray that you get the revelation that when he tells you to speak to the rock, Please speak to the rock. If he tell you not to look back, don't look back. And if he tell you to hit the rock, please strike the rock. But only on his commandment. Grace and peace, grace and peace, grace and peace, Robin. Brother Darnell. Grace and peace, brother Rob. Shalom. Brother Darnell, I just seen you going live, man. Getting it in. I love that. The book of Numbers, chapter 20. I'm going to get started now, family. The book of Numbers, chapter 20, verses 1 through 13. I'm going to read it once. I'm going to close out the message. Um, I, I, I don't try to make long videos. You know, there's some people make videos almost nine hours. I don't have nine hours. <laughs> you know, you got to watch that uh, for the next seven days. Do it in parts, you know. Try to give you 30 minutes and I'm off. I'm off. <laughs> I'm off. Hallelujah. The book of Numbers, chapter, chapter 20, verses 1 through 13, right? And it reads. Um, then the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, into the desert of Zin in the first month. And the people abode in Kadesh. And Miriam died there, and she was buried there, right? And there was no water for the congregation. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. And the people uh, chode with Moses and spoke saying, Will God that we had died with our brethren die before the Lord? And why have you brought us the congregation of the Lord into this wilderness that we and our cattle should die there? Just like black folks, right? Always complaining about something. Always. They said the people of the book is those Caucasian people, the Jewish people, right? But I could read a book and just see my people all through this book. I don't need to go to Deuteronomy 28. I don't need to read about the curses to identify who are the people of this book. This is my people. This are Ray Ray, Pookie Dem, folks that just came out of Egypt complaining about everything. Everything they have to complain about. Their flat screen TV is not big enough. When we was in America, we had um, 80 inch of TV. We had water. We used to go to Publix and get bottled water. They gave us a, a, a mattress, king size mattresses. We're not fit to be in the wilderness, Father. We had money, we had cars, we had computers. <laughs> this is our people, man. It's not even an argument. If you feel like you ain't the true Hebrews, if you feel that you ain't the Israelites, that's on you. But I know who I am because I see my people in this book. This is not Jewish people. This is not Caucasian people. They, they was not walking to and from throughout the continent of Africa. They was not walking from Egypt to the promised land. I don't even think they built to walk from Egypt to the land of Canaan. <laughs> Samson had lots, seven lots to be exact. Moses was able to put his hand into a bosom. And when he took it out, it was white. Then he took it, put it back in. It was like this. 
but we ain't gonna even get into that. I'm I'm gonna wait till the father put the words on my tongue exactly. Then I'm gonna go ahead and reiterate that for those who refuse to believe that we are the true Hebrews. Right, hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> it said, why have you brought up the, the congregation of the Lord into this wilderness that we and our cattle should die there? And wherefore have you made us to come up out of Egypt to bring us into this evil place? It is no place of seeds. It is no place of figs. It is no place of vines. It is no place of pomegranates. Neither is there any water for us to drink. It's nothing here, Moses. I'm sick and tired of you selling a hope and dream. You and your brother. Why did y'all take us out of the land of Egypt? We was good working for Donald Trump. We was good working for Barack Obama. We was good working for $8 an hour. Why did you free us? At least we have pomegranates. At least we have figs. At least we were able to walk out pit bull, even though we were getting shot down in the middle of the street. Even though we we're working for nickels on a dollar. Why have you freed us from the bondage of Egypt? I want to go back to Trump. At least he gave us a stimulus check. Were we able to spend twelve hundred little dollars? They still had the mind frame of a slave. Even though they were free. I'd rather have Trump. At least he was giving us advice that we should drink bleach or disinfect ourselves with lime salt. At least he had some sort of an answer for this coronavirus, but you're not telling us nothing, Moses. Hebrews 4, y'all. And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And they fell upon their faces and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. They fell upon their face. I'm sick of these bruises. I'm tired. I'm tired. They were like this, man. I'm tired. These knuckleheads complain about everything. Everything. They seen the glory of the Father. They witnessed the plagues. They witnessed the Palestinians. They heard the voice of the Father. They seen the consuming fire. They seen how we walked through the, uh, through the Red Sea. But yet they still believe that the Father will leave them north and forsake them. I'm sick of these knuckleheads. Moses just fell on his face. I'm tired. Father, I'm tired. Too many people for me to handle at one, at one time. Right, and Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And they fell upon their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Take the rod. Take the rod, and gather, thy, uh, gather you the assembly together, you and Aaron, your brother, and speak. He says, speak. This is, this is the very, very, this is the key word of this whole situation. He says, speak you unto the rock before their eyes. And it shall give forth his water, and you shall bring forth to them water out of the rock. So you shall give the congregation and their beasts to drink. Remember that word speak. He says speak to the rock, right? He said he wants you to obey the gospel. But you say, but, right? I'm an atheist. I can't obey the gospel because I don't believe that a man walked on water. I don't believe that a man healed the sick. I don't believe that a man raised the dead. I don't believe that a man turned water to wine. But he said, believe it in the gospel. Speak to the rock. Don't you hit the rock when I tell you to speak to the rock. I tell you to believe it in the gospel. Don't you give me a but. I don't believe in invisible God. I'm an astrologer. I'm a, I believe in the Big Bang Theory. What I saw you. You going to see the outcome when he tell you to speak, you should speak. And if you don't speak, you in trouble. If he tell you to the, the, the believe in the gospel and you choose to live the duration of your life not believe in the gospel, you in trouble. When the father tells us to speak to the rock, we have to speak. Period. If he tell you to hit the rock, then you hit the rock. 
If he tell you to believe in Jesus Christ, then you should believe in Jesus Christ. You have to believe it in Jesus' death, burial, and in his resurrection. If you choose not to believe it in Jesus, you in trouble. Because he died for your sin. He rose again. And he gave you all power to become sons and daughters of God through faith. If you choose to be an atheist, if you choose not to believe it in that, you are in trouble. I pray that you get the revelation of the death, burial, and the resurrection. And I pray that you repent and receive Christ as master. If you live the duration of your life mocking Jesus, laughing at Jesus, not believing in Jesus, you will spend eternity in the lake of fire. When he tell you to speak, speak. If he tell you to hit the rock, then you should hit the rock. You have to obey. Right? And the Lord spoke unto Moses saying, Take the rod, take the rod and gather uh, you the assembly together, you and Aaron your brother, and speak unto the rock before the eyes, and it shall give forth his water. And you shall bring forth to them water out of the rock, so you shall give the congregation and their beasts to drink. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. And he said unto them, Here now, you rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? Remember, he said, we. The father set apart. It ain't no we. This is, this is the father doing. It ain't no we. Aaron, you, you're not doing nothing. Even Christ said, the works that I'm doing, it's the Father that is working through me. It ain't no we. We ain't fit to bring forth no water. It is the Father fit to bring forth this water out of this rock. That's what he messed up. By saying we, when he should say the Father fit to show you something. And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod, he struck the rod twice. He did not speak to the rock. He struck it. He hit the rod. He hit the rock twice, family. That's where he messed up. Because the father said you should not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And Adam hearkened to the voice of his father. And he took it upon himself to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Then the father was walking in the, in the cool of the day. And he said, where are thy, Adam? Where are you, Eve? Now they want to hide. Now they want to duck. Now they want to dodge. Then he said, who told you that you was naked? Now they point finger and the blame of one another. It is the lady that you gave unto me. She gave me the apple and I ate. I don't want to hear that. Because I told you to tell your wife to not to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You cannot give me no excuses. Eve, what did you do? Well, the serpent deceived me. I don't want to hear it. Lot wife, then I told you not to look back and you look back. She want to give a bunch of excuses. The father didn't want to hear it. Turn her into a pillar of salt. Moses, didn't I tell you to speak to the rock? But yet you want to hit the rock? What is your excuse? Matter of fact, I don't even want to hear it. You will not enter to the promised land and I will kill your brother. Oh, why do you not believe in the gospel? Here you on judgment day. Uh, but, um, um, but, but, did not the words say every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess whether you a believer or an unbeliever? Well, I, 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 I thought the Bible was made up. Uh, uh, well, I would talk the big main theory. I would talk that. I don't want to hear it. Spin and turn it in the lake of fire. Right? And Moses lifted up his hand and with his rod, he smote the rock twice. He didn't speak to the rock. He didn't want to believe in the gospel. He didn't want to believe in Christ. He didn't want to believe that love fulfilled the law. He said he'd rather be justified by the works of the law. I know what the word said, but I'm going to lead upon my own understanding. I'm going to throw on tassels. I'm going to throw on fringes. I want to be under the curse of the law, even though he became a curse for us. I want to keep feast days. I want to keep high holy days. 
I want to look at a new moon. I want to be justified by the works of the law. God. But God said you're not justified by the works of the law, but through faith in Christ, speak to the rock. You knuckleheads want to hit the rock twice instead of speaking into it. You hard-headed, you stubborn, and you don't believe it in the Father. And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice, and the water came out abundantly. And the congregation drank, and their beasts also drank. And the Lord spoke unto Moses and Aaron, Because you believeth in me not, because you did not believe it in me, I am the word. Remember, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. If the word went forth and you took it upon yourself not to believe it in the word, you don't believe it in me. It's, and the Lord spoke unto Moses and Aaron, because you believe not in me to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this congregation into the land which I had given them. This is the water of Meribah because the children of Israel strove with the Lord and he was sanctified in them. They got in trouble, family. <laughs> because the father says, speak to the rock, Moses. Please, just follow simple instructions. Just speak to the rock. You don't have to do the most. You don't have to go up and beyond. Just obey my word, please. Just speak to the rock. You don't have to lean upon your own understanding. Matter of fact, the word said, lean not upon your own understanding, but believe every word that proceeded from the mouth of the Father. You don't have to do much. Just rest in my word. If I tell you to believe it in the gospel, believe it in the death, burial, and in the resurrection, believe in the finished works of Christ, just believe. Just speak to the rock. Don't hit the rock. Just believe. Believe that he's the master of the Sabbath. Believe that he's the Lord of the Sabbath. Believe that love fulfills the law. Believe that you're not justified by the law. Just believe in Christ. Believe that he died for your sins. Believe that he rose again. And believe that by his stripes we've been healed. Just believe. Just speak to the rock, Moses. Speak to the rock, the children of Israel. Speak to the rock. You don't have to do the most. You don't have to do no more than what I command you to do. Just speak. Don't hit the rock twice. Just speak. Christ loved you and he died for your sin. Just believe. That's part of speaking it. Because you're willing to obey the word that comes from my mouth and he spoke my word. He said, believe it in me and you will receive life. We have a lot of brothers that want to strike the rock twice instead of speaking it. They say Christ never existed. They say we believe in a big bang theory. We believe that we're justified by the works of the law. Instead of speaking to the rock, I would rather hit the rock twice. Even though the father told me to speak to it. I'd rather hit it twice. Because I don't believe. In Christ. Is what they will say. And you will find yourself in deep trouble if you continue to hit the rock instead of speaking to the rock. Um, that's about it, family. I just pray that you get something from this message. I know I did. Um, whatever the Father commands us to do, we have to do it. If he tells us to speak, please speak. <laughs> if he tells you to not to look back, please don't look back. If he tells you to hit the rock, then and only then you should hit the rock. He tells us to believe in Christ because Christ's death, buried, resurrection gave us life. Christ's death, buried, resurrection... Gave us the opportunity to now have access to eat from the tree of life. Because he condemned sin in the flesh. He overcame the world. He overcame the, the temptation of the devil. Through him we are now conquerors, conquerors. Just believe in Christ. Rest in his finished work. You cannot be justified through the works of the law. You're doing too much. When he tell you to speak, just speak. You don't have to hit the rock twice. You don't have to hit the rock ten times. You don't have to hit the rock a hundred times. Just speak to the rock and you will receive the gift of eternal life. Remember, Jesus is the rock. Now speak to him.
Grace of peace. Shalom.